Yet another selection of free Dragon Ball What Ifs requested by viewers. Remember to request your own in the comments and subscribe if wanting to see when it's done. The first request comes from J.W. Appel on what if Nail had his potential unlocked before fighting Frieza. It's worth first asking, did he already get his potential unlocked? And the answer would be... Obviously, he's far stronger than anyone else living on Namek, and has the character the Saichoro would approve of. That said, this becomes what if he got all the key he could train to acquire unlocked, much like Piccolo in Superhero. For this, the Saichoro has a premonition of disaster approaching Namek, around a month before Frieza arrives, with Nail seeing the best option being for him to be brought to his natural limits, with only one wish used, allowing the dragon balls to recharge roughly by the time Frieza arrives. Though obviously inferior to what someone like Rodai Kaioshin would provide, or for someone who would strew further like Piccolo's wish, it's enough that Nail would seem invincible at this point. Due to his desire to defend the Saichoro though, he takes no action at first, so Finns only diverge when he fights Frieza, where he instantly tears Frieza apart. He then goes to the remaining enemies that have all gathered at Frieza's ship, with him immediately eliminating Vegeta and Jis, before injuring Goku's body enough that the body change occurs, and he then gets rid of Ginyu too. With no more obstacles, Piccolo, Shaozu, and Yamcha are revived, with Ten Shinhan being revived 130 days later, while Earth's Dragon Balls revive Frieza's victims. Cold Dior comes to Namek for revenge, but Nail swiftly executes him. On Earth, the events of the future timeline transpire, apart from Trunks's absence causing Gohan to eventually go back in time instead, teach his father and past self how to become Super Saiyans, and, as in a few similar scenarios, his efficient nature would lead to Goku taking the heart medicine early, Gero being stopped from activating 17 and 18, and Gohan finding the shutdown remote before Cell's appearance in Ginger Town prompts him to stay in the past. Far weaker than normal without Nail, Piccolo still fuses with Kami when seeing he can't leave things up to the Super Saiyans. Cell is far weaker too without Frieza and cold cells, but having drained Gohan in his timeline is enough to keep Finns even and make Piccolo admit in defeat far more genuine before Gohan arrives. Without Nail's slight arrogance when a plan comes together, Piccolo doesn't reveal 17 and 18 are destroyed, with Cell going about draining humans while Goku goes in the room of spirit and time with Gohan, flaring a slight amount of ki to bait Cell before dealing with the artificial life form. He takes future Gohan into to the room to master Super Saiyan a few days later before they part, with events then becoming nearly identical to enough I've done that you should check out after this. The second one is from Gamma 1, on what if Moro was released in the Frieza arc. For the scenario, when considering his history as a prisoner, we'll say Amond is present at the prison and never met Turles if he were even part of this continuity. Amond manages to escape through a galactic patrol member falling for the old injured prisoner routine, and freeing Moro when aware of his reputation, but doesn't have enough time to free the rest. Still having his magic sealed, Moro cannot do anything but bide his time, while Amond goes after Lohan and Fruit on whatever obscure planet is being used as a base of operations, and gathering some remnants of Frieza's army to aid them. This changes in Age 774, when Pure Boo's destruction lifts the seal, and Moro quickly starts draining planets impatiently. The danger he proves to the universe causes Beerus' prophetic dream to become his destined rival being slain by an evil goat, and the nightmare waken him early as he goes searching for both the Super Saiyan God and the threat to its growth. The events of Battle of Gods thereby occur a month after the Boo arc, rather than four years, as does Merus taking Boo, which has Goku, Vegeta, and Beerus meet with the Galactic Patrol, and Beerus deciding to erase Moro for interrupting his sleep, so long as Goku and Vegeta tell him what they know of the Super Saiyan God. After it, the Dragon Balls informing everyone of the Super Saiyan God, and Tarble being used to complete it. Goku and Vegeta start in their Shugyo under Whis far earlier, and with some input from Merus, makes them very over-prepared for the events in Super, with this extra time being enough to master not just Super Saiyan Blue, but their respective godly techniques 
techniques and make the likes of Golden Freezer and Hit a joke. Vegeta Black is far stronger than Goku Black would be, but is easily defeated by Ultra Ego Vegeta. Goku takes on Zamasu before telling Trunks of the Mafuba and have them go to the past to learn it. While he and Vegeta stall Zamasu, Trunks succeeding and sealing Zamasu away. Goku and Vegeta steamroll through the Tournament of Power, with Goku's prior battle with Topo having him be confident enough he considers putting Yamcha in as a bench warmer rather than Frieza. The events with Brawly and Granola don't happen, superhero occurs as usual, and how this affects future events we have yet to see. Finally, to round off this slightly Frieza arc centric video is one from Maurice Marvolo Maximilian on what if Goku and Vegeta ended up in each other's bodies against Ginyu. In order for this to be possible when the one way transfer between he and another, Ginyu succeeds in taking Vegeta's body, but Gohan and Kuririn being far more willing to attack Vegeta has their growing unlocked key increase quicker, with them damaging Vegeta's body even more when Ginyu can't bring out its full power. Goku manages to get in the way when Ginyu tries to take Gohan's body before he, Kuririn and Gohan get rid of him with a combined attack. Goku is still put in the medical machine, with Vegeta being in the position to be outvoted on who needs it more, with Kuririn deciding the opportunity has come to take the Dragon Balls from Vegeta, with no disturbances given time for a third wish to be made, where Kuririn tries to wish for Goku and Vegeta to be restored to their own bodies, but this is impossible when they and Ginyu who caused it are more powerful than the Saichoro. Instead, Kuririn desperately wishes for Goku to be healed immediately. This revitalization from a biological trait has Goku get attuned to Vegeta's body immediately, though still not able to move as fast as usual when he hadn't been conditioned by 100 Gs. Goku doesn't immediately go for the kill, with Frieza managing to go into his true form, the quicker paced version of their fight occurring as Piccolo arrives with the slower body, not giving Goku the luxury to conserve stamina well. Dende heals him immediately after the Genki Dama, with Frieza not having a good opportunity to see him do so until after he attacks Piccolo, causing Dende to be able to heal Piccolo as they and Gohan bear witness to Super Saiyan Goku fighting Frieza. This puts Piccolo at the angle to counter Frieza's attempt to destroy Namek, with the fight essentially being an uninterrupted version of how it normally go. Frieza's survival doesn't go unnoticed by Piccolo, who finishes the job before Goku tells Dende it's best to heal Vegeta as well, both out of respect for his previous help and their promised fight together, even if in different bodies. Vegeta taking time to adjust to Goku's body and training to surpass him despite lagging behind, causes Vegeta's frustration to be directed at his super elite body being taken by Kakaroto. With this further rage from self-loathing and the S-cells Goku's body naturally cultivated, causing him to become a Super Saiyan soon after everyone returns to Earth. Chi-Chi struggles to get used to her husband's new appearance, but in time accepts that he's still the same Goku. As the Namekians are waiting to revive Kaior students and Kuririndo, they and their planet are destroyed by Cold Dior before his intel sends him to Earth. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta have their rematch, which is very close with Goku's faster body being used well by Vegeta to make up for Goku's superior ki, but Goku still ultimately wins. Vegeta takes care of Cold when he arrives. Earlier than usual when not reconstructing Frieza, Buruma's feelings for Goku cause her attraction to Vegeta to happen even sooner, with Yamcha unable to be revived. With the body he's in, it's Vegeta who falls victim to the heart virus, and Gero having stopped gathering new data after the Saiyan arc, having him believe Goku has died, with him still releasing 17 and 18 as he did in Trunks' timeline. Goku still falls to the twins with no way to escape, and events go the same until Trunks returns to the past, and being very secretive towards his father when telling him of the virus while telling Goku the truth. Vegeta doesn't wish to be hindered, and takes the medicine at the slightest symptom. Not being hindered causes Goku to easily crush 19, before Vegeta's arrival prevents 20's escape. Trunks' arrival and confusion causes the Dragon Team to desperately search for the lab with no luck. Because of this, the events of Trunks finding the shutdown device don't happen at all, with Goku instead 
recommending going in the room of spirit and time immediately, with Vegeta and Trunks going in first, and Trunks being confident to save his world and defeating the unknown enemy who attacks three years later, preventing Cell from going back in time or the timeline splintering off. After Goku shows his superiority to Vegeta, Piccolo decides it may be time for him to merge with Kami for them to keep up, with the latter not getting any younger, the Dragon Balls being gone for good. Seven years later, aside from Goten looking very different, things go the same as usual until Dabra makes himself known with the Dragon Team being very underprepared for him. Goku and Gohan go into the room to break beyond Super Saiyan, with them achieving Super Saiyan 2 and stopping Babidi. With all the strong competitors gone, Mr. Satan wins the Battle Royale legitimately, but passes the Champion Torch on to Gohan at the 26th Tenkaichi Budokai. For Super's continuity, Beerus still wakes up, but no Dragon Balls prevents anyone from knowing how to become a Super Saiyan God, with him going back to sleep soon after. Virtually none of Super's events occur until Super Hero, beyond Future Trunks' battle with Dabra, where only one trip in the room makes Trunks too underprepared to do anything, even with Super Saiyan 2. The Gammas prove too strong for Piccolo and the Saiyans, who are annihilated before Hedor eventually stops Magenta when wary of him. As with a few other GT scenarios, Shin becoming aware of Baby eventually has Kibito bring Goku and Vegeta to the Kaioshinkai, with a path that leads to them using the Potara to defeat Baby. It's here that we see the strength of character for Goku and Vegeta, neither being changed heavily in their motivations by their new body, when still the same people at heart, though there being enough changes around them to truly hold back the potential of their true selves. Thank you for having watched through these what-ifs. Check out this playlist of previous ones, and I'll see you next time.